Look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. Today we're on the 19th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The Mass this morning is offered for the intentions of the people of our parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have to do, through my heart, through my heart, through my most grievous Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Son, Lord, Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he went into the cave and spent the night in it. Then he was told, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Then the Lord himself went by. There came a mighty wind, so strong it tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there came the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. 
I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. What I want to say is no pretense. I say it in union with Christ. It is the truth. My conscience in union with the Holy Spirit assures me of it too. What I want to say is this. My sorrow is so great, my mental anguish so endless, I would willingly be condemned and be cut off from Christ if it could help my brothers of Israel, my own flesh and blood. They were adopted as sons. They were given the glory and the covenants, the law and the ritual were drawn up for them, and the promises were made to them. They are descended from the patriarchs, and from their flesh and blood came Christ, who is above all. God forever blessed. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he would send the crowds away. After sending the crowds away, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, while the boat, by now far out on the lake, was battling with a heavy sea for there was a headwind. In the fourth watch of the night, he went towards them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But at once Jesus called out to them, saying, Courage, it is I, do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered, Lord, he said, if it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord.
I suspect that uh, over the last few months we've all got into slightly different habits, especially our daily routine, I'm sure, has changed somewhat. Since the start of shutdown, I have to confess that my morning routine has become slightly more gentle, and if I'm honest, a bit more casual, or some might say lazy. I've got my alarm set now for Radio 3, Bach before 7 gets me into the right mood before the day starts with a brief blast of the Baroque before the start of the ritual lavabo. We've all got different ways that we like to start the day. We find different things help us to kind of get going at the start of the day. It's one of the blessings and curses of life, I suppose, nowadays, that we can have music, we can have entertainment wherever we go. And I find it's helpful to have some soothing harmonies to just slide me into the start of each day. But I have to say, I don't spend all day listening to music. It's a prelude, really, for my silent prayer in the morning. I like to come into the church before the church is open and to have that silent time praying before our Lord in the tabernacle, before the church opens and before the business of the day begins. The great 17th century French philosopher Pascal, Blaise Pascal said, all of the problems of mankind stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. The readings of the Mass this weekend present us with a God who shows himself to us in silence. Not as Elijah expected in the first reading, in wind, fire or earthquake, but in the still, small voice of calm. Likewise, only after the storm on the lake were the apostles able to experience Jesus, to see him and to hear him in the calm. Could it be that the world no longer hears God because of the constant debilitating noise and speed of life. But nothing great ever happens in noise and confusion. All of the prophets and the saints teach us that truth. With noise you can't study, in noise you can't read, in noise you can't train your intellect or structure your thoughts properly. The tragedy of our world is the senseless noise that hates silence. We all find silence challenging precisely because we've become so used to the dictatorship of noise and confusion, all of which diverts us away from our path to God, and which is one of the ways the evil one tries to prevent us from encountering God, from coming before the divine. Whereas on the contrary, silence brings us into an encounter a sense of wonder in God's presence, especially here in the quiet before the tabernacle. Elijah's great virtue, and it's the virtue of all the saints and of holy people, is that he knows how to discern the voice of God from all the other noises and voices. He isn't wowed or impressed by all of the immediate values of the world. Rather, he listens, waits, discerns, discriminates, and is able to give himself to the true God alone. Elijah up there on Mount Horeb is a powerful image for our time when secularism, when the world reigns supreme. One of the ways that we can characterize secularism is the cultural incapacity to hear the tiny whispering voice of God. Secularism is a total systemic surrender to the mighty powers of this world, to pleasure, money, power, politics, career. The earthquake, the fire, the wind, all these great powers that are of the world. A secular person is a person who has utterly surrendered to those values. But what our culture needs 
is a whole army of Elijahs. Elijah criticized the king for having gone over to the worship of the false gods. And that's what our culture has done today. We've done the same. We need Elijahs capable of discerning that tiny, whispering voice of God. I suppose if we could do one good thing over this summer period, it could be to have the intention to discover again the importance of inner silence, an inner serenity, so that we can meet God and hear God in our daily lives. And because of this function better and more authentically as human beings that have been created in God's own image and likeness. Next weekend, we're going to have the great feast of Mary's Assumption into Heaven. By her inner silence and recollection, she was ever attentive and listening to God's word, to God's voice. May she help us in the same way, to meet God within the silence in which he makes himself known to us. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now I'm sure. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. to the Virgin Mary and became him. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Heaven and earth. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy. These gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. 
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in <clears throat> Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and my Savior and my soul. For those participating remotely in this Holy Mass, spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. The Body of Christ.
O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord who gives you your fill of finest wheat. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. So just remind you that as from next weekend, the Assumption of Our Blessed Lady, there'll be the normal schedule of Masses and liturgies throughout the week, but of course, this does depend on sufficient people signing up on the website, firstly, to come to Holy Mass, and secondly, to be available for the stewarding and the cleaning of the church um, before the Mass and, and, and afterwards. So please keep an eye on that. And also, if you know someone who wants to come to Mass and doesn't have the internet connection, you might be good enough to help them out with that. If you want to help any of the victims of the tragedy in the Lebanon that occurred earlier this week, then on the website you'll find details of how the aid to the church in need are supporting the victims of this terrible disaster. Uh, go there and you'll find the little button where you can donate, which the aid to the church in need is coordinating. Remind you that next Saturday there's no morning mass uh, because there's an ordination taking place here in the church which is just open, unfortunately, to the family and friends of the ordinand. But please do pray for Michael Barwick, who will be ordained a deacon here next Saturday morning. As always, I invite you to put any weekly offerings into the baskets at the back of the church. Better still, sign up to do it by a standing order. Um, thank you for your continued generosity in these times. And I wish you a blessed Sunday and a very happy week ahead. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Amen.